Posey Gloves here, and this is another video in the Digital Audio Basics series. So today we're going to be talking about what is digital audio. They give you a clue in the name, dig digital digits, meaning numbers. So we're taking audio and turning it into numbers. That's what digital audio is. Now I'm going to reference some stuff that I cover in the, my Sound and Synth Basics course, so you might want to go check that out if you're a little concerned about the physics of sound and a little a few other things but i'm going to give a quick rundown so we we hear stuff right we got air pressure waves and the, we register them as what we would call sound so we want to find a way to recreate this and sort of like put it in our pocket so we can have it for later and we came up with this thing called analog uh what happened was well we could go way back to edison he he found a way that is called transduction, where you could take one form of energy, so we have air pressure waves, we're going to turn them into an equal uh, analogous, analogous form of energy that will move in the same way as the airways, but it will be represented as something else. What are you talking about? Let's, uh, let's bring it to this microphone right here. So I'm making air pressure waves, and I can hear it. It reaches my ear, goes through all the different parts of my ear, and gets registered as neural impulses, and I will hear it. So... If I want that to be, I, what I need to do is find a way to recreate this air pressure. Air pressure seems like the easiest thing to recreate, so we're going to choose that one. Instead of recreating neural impulses, maybe one day, instead of recording using microphones and things, we'll use weird brain technology that can record neural impulses. That way you could just skip this whole thing. It will be some new form of audio. But right now, it's acoustic. So the, the, when it's in the sound, when it's moving around in a space like this, that's considered acoustic. When it's transduced into another form of energy, then is it audio. So we turn it into audio by this microphone right here. This microphone has a magnet. It's actually a Shure SM57. It's got a magnet and it's got a little coil. And when my voice moves, depending on how, how my voice moves, like when my voice makes air pressure waves, depending on the type of pressure wave that hits it, it will move in a consistent variation that is proportional to the air pressure waves. That will cause magnetic voltage, uh, magnetic flux, which will cause a voltage to be induced in the coil. It's called magnetic induction, and that magnetic induction will vary equally to my the sound pressure waves created by my voice. So now we've got this electricity that looks just like my voice, but now you can't hear it. This is once it's been translated or transduced. I guess I should use transduction. Once it's been transduced into that form, it is now considered audio. It's no longer acoustics. It goes in and what happens is we can then take it from there and we can translate it back into audio. We can feed it to a speaker that's essentially a backwards microphone so that if we feed the voltage in and it moves a coil that causes it to come out our speaker. And that's great, but there are a number of limitations doing it this way. Um, limitation number one, frequency response. And an, so depending on your source that you put it into, that will determine, you know, how accurately the frequencies of my voice are represented. Now, that's not really a huge deal with analog, and analog technically has an infinite freq frequency response. We'd actually consider our hearing band limited because, uh, so what is band limiting? Go look up the video in Sound Synth Basics on bandwidth. So we'll, our ears can only move so fast or so slow, and as a result, they are band limited. So we don't actually need an infinite spectrum. There's lots of interesting studies being done, but everything I have read so far in the studies that have been published that I've been made aware of have all shown that higher frequency content above what we can hear does not affect our hearing, including things like psychoacoustic effects. So uh, don't worry about high frequency content for now. But that was one plus the analog had was it was a continuous signal. So the, the fluctuations are all there. Uh, but it might not be able to capture the full dynamic range. Another problem that we had is noise floor. When we put signal into this, uh, into the, our system, every extra wire, every little thing it has to go through, maybe we're processing it and compressing it and adding reverb and doing all these things, equalization. When we do those things, we add noise to our signal because we're sending it through more parts. And the parts themselves add noise floor. It's called machine noise. Um, but anyways, it brings your noise floor up. So uh, so that can become an issue. And you can get what tape hiss is one of the best examples. That, that kind of a thing. So we wanted a way to sort of 
be able to we wanted a better medium is what we were kind of looking for and we came up with digital audio so this is actually my voice right now is digital audio it's being recreated as an analog stage because once once we get it into this analog stage we have to convert it and so if you look over here this right here is my focus right 6i6 it is a converter for digital audio what it does is it takes the analog and turns it into one and zeros now it breaks it up into bits and pieces so some people don't like that but i don't it's it's been mathematically proven that this can this can reproduce every piece of the audible spectrum so what we're concerned with perfectly given the correct specifications are met which nowadays are not super hard all the problems actually that we have with digital audio are in the converting stages getting it to the digital audio and then coming back there and the way you do that if you if we could do it perfectly we would be able to perfectly recreate all our signals um so if you ever have crappy audio it was analog's fault basically digital can do it perfectly it's been proven there are theorems published on it uh but so that's that's one thing. Some people will like analog more because it's not linear. Some people like those mistakes, and there are different reasons that you'll be more informed on as we go along here. That will that will show to you, you know, what these differences are. But digital audio is we take our signal from an analog source, so it's audio, it's not acoustics, goes into a converter, comes out, it goes into our converter as ones and zeros. Now once it's in these ones and zeros we can copy it indefinitely without ever running it through more wires and gears so our noise floor stays where it's at it's essentially perfect copies as long as we do a good job converting it in the first place um it's is way easier to manipulate you can send it through processing and do all sorts of things that you just cannot do in the analog domain like there are time stretching techniques that are exclusively digital there are uh, processing techniques that would add tremendous amounts of noise uh, if you were to try to replicate the exact same signal flow in the analog land, it has uh, FIR filters, which you don't know what that is yet, but it creates phase. It will line up our phase for us. And so I'm assuming you know this from my sound and synth basic series, but if you run something through an analog system like a square wave, some filters in the analog system will pass some frequencies faster than others. And as a result, you actually get your square wave will be slanted. Like you'll have phase shifts in the square wave. So your signal will sum slightly differently. So these are all issues that we face that digital has sought to uh, fix. Now, digital's, their goal was making a perfect system. Ironically, people like analog because the distortion techniques it offers are rather, they're nice sounding. They're harmonically pleasing. They line up in intervals that we as humans perceive as generally pretty okay we kind of like them we like vinyl and that's got a lot of noise on it and we like we just like this stuff digital some people would say is less forgiving some of it's just the fact that people grew up listening to analog and when digital is a thing you're gonna think analog i'm not sure what the perception of analog will be but it's sort of got a hype going for it but there's some truth to what they're saying based on the harmonics that are added when you do things like distort in digital land Unless you're doing it with a particular math algorithm, it's going to sound horrible. It's not going to be harmonically related to the other content inside your spectrum. So by now, you should know what digital audio is. It's, it's you know, audio represented as digits. That was the whole point of this video. I went a little further because I wanted to make a real clear sort of what happens. Because I could just say that and be done, but I wanted you to grasp like a bigger picture. So if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Opposing wolves. Reversing.